Hey everybody, welcome to Never Stop Building. My name is Jason, and today I want to give you a little overview of this cool post scarf joint called the Kanawatsugi. Uh, so I had the opportunity to renovate my friend's barn apartment, uh, which you can see I am demolishing here. And uh, I really, unfortunately, didn't film most of this project because it happened kind of sporadically over many months, which was not the goal, and I obviously could have done better at managing my time on this project. But the one thing that I did film a lot of was this cool scarf joint process. Um, so as we were demolishing this place, you can see I'm unwrapping this post. And what we discovered was that it was actually two posts held together with a two by six material. And we really weren't sure if the barn had originally been a smaller roof and then they added the gambrel later. Um, or they framed it with one length of pole and, they, and then they needed to extend these central posts to support the roof. Uh, but at the end of the day, we unwrapped it and it was two posts just was nailed together. And for this renovation, we were going for some lots of wood log cabin vibes. Um, so we wanted to leave the post exposed and, and we needed to extend it, obviously, to get back to the, the ridge beam uh, and do it in a good in a way that looked really nice so uh, we use this traditional Japanese scarf joint so what we discovered when we pulled this post apart is that the top half of this post that I'm laying out here for the joint was curved pretty substantially and so we needed to basically orient the joint so that the part we cut away was partially air um, and that would help remove some of that curve so let me jump in to give some more detail on that you can see this is curved out of all sorts out of whack and what I did was I, I used the square to create the theoretical perfectly straight post, these two pencil lines. Because we want our, you know, we want our, our new post to be basically on this theoretical. You know, this basically, if we captured the post within a post, we'd only get 130. Whereas the post itself is, well, it's closer to 143. If you imagine this being the bottom post. Right. Well, this, all the wood that this takes up is going to be removed from the bottom post. So the wood is already removed here. You know, look, there's already this gap. So that's making me think like the orientation of the post should be part that's cut out of the bottom post beyond this side because there's already material removed. That way we can, we're basically, we want to maximize how big this post is going to be. We're, we're superimposing the straight, correct joinery layout onto this weird curvature thing. Well, I hope that made some sense. Uh, what I'm doing here is I first cut off the extra part of wood from that curved post, square up the post, and then cut all the rest of the joinery. I will say it is a lot easier to cut this joint on the part that you can put on sawhorses than it is to cut the piece that's sticking up in the air. This joint is really often used in a situation where you're repairing a post uh, where the bottom part had rotted away. So the house that we worked on in Japan, the moisture had gotten in under the floor in the crawl space and rotted out the bottoms of the posts that were sitting on the foundation stones. And so the process we used was we jacked up the house, we cut away the rotten part uh, and cut a scarf joint into the nice part of the post. And then we created a mating post of the new material that was trimmed to the length so that when we lowered the house back on, it would it would sit at the right level. Uh, and then you just raise the house up by 15 or 18 millimeters, whatever the length of the, the key, the part of the joint that keys into each other, and you can insert the new post and lower the house back down. What's really cool about this joint is it's very strong in both, uh, both directions, X and Y, I suppose you could say. Uh, and you only have to move the house up in the Z direction, the up and down direction by a very small amount. So, you know, when you're jacking up a whole house, you, you can't really lift it a whole bunch, but you can lift it by 15 millimeters usually. So in this case, we did the opposite. So we needed to replace the upper portion of the post and we cut the scarf joint into the lower part of the post. And then we have a, a nice piece of fresh pine that we cut the mating version. And I think it looks really good to have this contrast between this old patinaed, uh, I guess it's pressure treated, but it cleaned up pretty nice with sanding, uh, old post, and then the nice new fresh pine wood. It's 
like a nice little, you don't have to go back to your papers when you do everything. Let's say this post becomes perfectly square and perfectly dimensioned. And we lay out these lines perfectly and then we cut them exactly in half. So there's half pencil line on this and half pencil line on the post upstairs. Then everything fits together perfectly, Perfect. but it's never exactly that. So you kinda gotta know if you remove pencil line on both sides, it, it may be a little loose. Or if you remove pencil line on mm -hmm. one side and show pencil line or half pencil line on the other, so you gotta, gotta play with that. I mean, ideally you're cutting the, every pencil line in half so that when everything goes together, it's tight mm -hmm. and it fits just right. The process I used to cut this joint was to first cut off the end of the post and square it up with the, the layout. Then I transfer my layout lines onto that clean end. I cut away the big section of waste where the other post is going to fit into. And then take a bunch of uh, cross cuts to clear out the waste behind the step. Then I cut my key and remove a little bit more waste with a bunch of extra cuts. I'll use a router on the end set to the depth to remove the extra material there. Then I'll chisel off the waste behind the step and the router waste. Well, first I'm gonna drill out the mating parts the mating mortises, I guess, and then chisel those, square them up. And then the other mortise tongue key area, I don't really know the names of these. Then I clamp on these blocks that let me pair and plane uh, this mating surface nice and flat. Now I use a hand plane to relieve the inside of these two mating surfaces so that only the outsides touch really tightly. The inside is a very little bit of relief so that it, um, it doesn't hang up the joint. And that's what I'm using uh, these blocks to do some final pairing and cleanup, checking with the square. All at the same time. Okay. Slow and steady. So, ready? Yep. Jack. That was about a millimeter. Jack. All right, go. It's getting awfully tight. I gotta hand it to Morgan because this is like the first thing I threw him into when he started helping me. And uh, basically we you know, just jumped into it, jacked up a whole house and set this post with me, uh, which was a little it was a little crazy, a little intense. It's cool because actually here with the, the time lapse, you can see the whole ridge beam moving up in the frame as we jack this thing up to accept the post. That's on. Okay. Will it fit? Ready, turn. Ready, turn.
All right, so that's the fabrication and installation of the uh, Kanawatsugi scarf joint to extend this post and the barn renovation. Uh, if any of you are interested in this barn renovation, I do have a bunch of pictures and a little bit of video um, of the process. If you let me know in the comments, if enough people let me know, I can whip up some sort of narrated slideshow. Uh, it really was cool, and I really did wish I filmed more um, to take this 80s carpeted 80s barn apartment and turn it into a little cabin. Uh, we did some cool frame and panel cabinetry and live edge windowsills and a nice little bathroom. Uh, so let me know, and if you subscribe to the channel, you'll find out if I make another video. So thanks a lot for watching, and we will see you next time.